The Republican primary race for governor heats up, and State Treasurer Dan Rutherford says he's in to stay. We'll talk about it next on Capitol View. Welcome to Capitol View, the program where we talk about state issues, sometimes federal issues, and how they just might affect your life. I'm Bernie Schoenberg from the State Journal Register. It's a hot political season. Of course, it always is in Illinois. And here to discuss it with me, a couple of folks who know a lot about this. Kent Redfield is back, Professor Emeritus of Political Science, University of Illinois, Springfield. Kent, welcome. Good to be here. Bruce Rushton, reporter with the intrepid weekly Illinois Times in Springfield. Bruce, welcome. Thank you. Okay, Dan Rutherford, state treasurer, who I've actually been covering since he was running for student body president in 1977 at Illinois State University when he was a fourth year student from Pontiac, says he's in the race to stay despite the fact that uh, an ex-employee now has accused him of, uh, of making, putting pressure on to do political work at work and also of sexual harassment. The man's name is Ed Nikolowski. He left that office uh, after this issue came out or was coming out and is now working for the Cook, uh, Cook County Recorder. Um, this makes it, it seems difficult, but Mr. Rutherford, uh, whose office was investigating this and a report may be coming out sometime, uh, uh, and as we tape the show, it's not yet out, but uh, where are we on this and uh, is he a viable candidate? Uh, I think he's still viable, uh, but uh, I think this is terribly damaging. And you know, he he is not you know he's not the front runner. Uh, everybody have, except Bruce Rauner has money problems, and now you've got an issue that is going to cost you votes. It's going to cost you votes because people some people will not vote for a candidate if they believe that candidate is gay. That's out there. Asked in Chicago, but it is you know that is out there, and some people are going to believe the charges. They're not going to vote for him. Some people are don't think that you know Brady and Dillard rerunning that is a winner. They want a new candidate, a fresh face. They might have said, well, I'm really not sure about Rauner, and and but Rutherford's a fresh face. Now he's risky. Rutherford is risky. If this if he gets the nomination and it blows up in the summer, then you're back to Scott Lee Cohen and Jack Ryan. Which are trying to people who won primaries in the past and, and had, had to drop to out. Hey, that was good, one Democrat and one Republican. Yeah, and so, you know, it just, it, it makes it hard. I mean, and, and it was an uphill fight before this came out, and this just adds to his troubles. Bruce, do you, is it fair, and is the charge credible in, in the federal lawsuit from Mr. Mikulowski? And is it fair that someone like Dan Rutherford, who truly has been, you know, worked in the Thompson administration on international business, was in the House, was in the Senate, you know, is state treasurer, is very knowledgeable about state government and has been building his career all this time. Is it fair several weeks before an election for this to come out and how does he fight it if it is well, not? I, fair, I, I, I find it hard to believe that this is fair. Uh, I think that the one telling thing, I mean, I agree with, with Kent, actually I'm a little more uh, uh, pessimistic. I would say he's teetering at best at this point in time. Uh, the timing of, these, of, of this coming out is just so suspect. Uh, the accuser has uh, uh, money problems. Uh, it's right before the election. The accuser is uh, not unsophisticated. Uh, he uh, holds a law, he's a lawyer. Uh, he's worked in government all his life. He was head of motor vehicle services at age 28, just a couple of years out of law school. Thomas. Yes, correct. Just prior to that, uh, he'd worked, I believe, in the Daily Administration and the Building Division. Uh, so he's been around the block. He's run for judge himself. Uh, he can't not know uh, uh, the repercussions of what he's saying. Also, his lawyer does have ties to Rauner, and uh, there's just a lot of quinky dinks okay. going on here. Okay, his lawyer, uh, uh, it's Christine, Christine Seven. Seven, okay, of Chicago, uh, was paid $3,500 last year to mm -hmm review a lease for office space for the Rauner, the campaign of Bruce Rauner. Sure. And Bruce Rauner, of course, is the guy who, Kent, you said he's, uh, before the, we started taping, spent about $7 million to date in the governor's race. Mm -hmm. And we think that combined the other three candidates, which is uh, state senators, uh, Bill Brady and Kirk Dillard, in addition to uh, Treasurer Rutherford, have only spent maybe a combined $2 million. Um, you, you uh, we, oh, he did, 
she was paid the $3,500, sure. but she denies and the Rauner campaign denies that there is any tie to Mr. Michalowski who filed this lawsuit against Rutherford. And Rutherford, however, is blaming Bruce Rauner for doing this. And you know, I saw uh, something that he put out a, a letter to his supporters saying, you know, the billionaire bully is trying to take me out here. Is it fair because he doesn't have proof? Well, is it, yeah, I mean, I don't sh I'm not sure that that's fair, but talk about here, I mean, how many lawyers are there in Illinois? And Rauner just happens to pick this one. Uh, 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 Mikulowski just happens to pick this one. Uh, you know, there's no proof. There's just a lot of smoke here in terms of, of was Rauner behind it? And, and you're right, it probably isn't fair to bring, up, to bring up Rauner. I think it was probably miscalculation on the treasurer's part. You know, that said, I think one of the main things here is Anybody else going to come forward? I mean, because folks that do this sort of thing don't just pick one person, and never, it's never happened. This is never, the treasurer has never been accused of this before. So far, there's been nobody else that's come forward saying, me too. Uh, corroboration is always going to be difficult because you don't be engage in this sort of behavior in front of everybody in the world. Uh, but you add it all together, and that coupled with the timing, I mean, let's, you know, let's, the, the most severe allegation, the one that's the most shocking, occurred, I believe, two years ago in 2011. That's the grab, the grope. Uh, it's hard. At the, supposedly at the treasurer's house, but the treasurer the, said that the yeah. guy had gone home that day and his travel yeah. voucher shows it, and he yeah, wasn't there and, that and, night. And the, the chief of staff said, oh, yes, we're, it's, it, it, the in, insinuation that it's happened to the chief of staff, too, and we're, you know, at least we all have jobs, that sort of thing. And I'm reading this, and it's, you, know, you can't entirely discount it, but it's, it's, it's a fairly, it's obviously a serious allegation. Uh, and you're sitting here looking at, the, again, it, it comes back to the timing, that $300,000 uh, in the midst of a hot gubernatorial race, uh, that's, that was allegedly the demand. That seems, that, you know, and oh, the, we've heard, we've heard meaning, no... Meaning Mr. Mikulowski's lawyer heard, had asked for a settlement of $300,000. Exactly, $300,000. And, and there's been no denial from the lawyer that she did request $300,000. Yeah, I haven't heard what, one. This is what Rutherford so, said before the lawsuit was even absolutely. out, and he preemptive strike to tell the world something is mm. happening, but I can't say what. So and then it this, turned out yeah, to be this lawsuit. Yeah. So at this point in time, what we appear to have, the biggest uncontroverted fact, is a demand for $300,000 on the part of the accuser who's in the midst of bankruptcy. And this is just an aside, but he said that he's incurred $100,000 in medical bills. And there's this linkage that I think is, is probably dicey at best, that the treasurer caused him some sort of problems with his uh, neurological system or something. Doesn't well, the, the, stress, the stress the of stress. being of, of having your case brought out in a press conference yeah, with sure. law enforcement officials or former yeah. ones standing next to the It was my like understanding that. That, that state employees have medical insurance. How can you get $100,000 in medical bills if you have what's probably a pretty good health plan? I mean, that's a small detail here. But I'm, re I'm reading this stuff, and, and it seems to me that reading you know, the complaint, I think, is relatively short, 15 pages, and the, the, a lot of that's devoted to naming the parties and whatnot. The substance of it is only a very few pages. There's very little... Um, uh, cooperate. He said there were, for example, there were hundreds of text messages uh, 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 saying, uh, demanding that he do political work on, on company time. Where are those text messages? Are they going to surface at some point in time? That to me seems to be an opportunity to corroborate what happened, but we don't have that. We've got, I think, one or two text messages, and I've read them, and I don't see them as being smoking guns. I mean, if you have, you know, it can be cumulative. If you, in fact, have hundreds of those, then you start scratching your head. But so far, three text messages, and it, 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 it certainly doesn't seem to be soup right now, and it might not matter. I would say, however, that. I think that there's a, a, a portion of the electorate, I think this is evidenced by a recent Chicago uh, a television station report, they tried to, they confronted uh, Mr. Mikulowski and said, why did you wait so long? It's a very fair question. And nobody's answered that question. Yeah, that was and Mike so, Flannery yeah. of uh, Fox. Right. Fox a, a fair yeah. question. Fox a fair question, and given the circumstances, it should be and, answered. And, and Mr. So Mikulowski was at work and said, "I can't talk about it because I'm at work at the at his new county job." But yeah. He, yeah, won't return calls. His lawyer won't return calls. And so, you know, that I think is I think if nothing else, we deserve an answer as to why is the timing what it's been, and we haven't gotten that. And yet. of course, with five weeks before the election. Yeah, you know, and four, and four that's six. really the problem. If what we know now, if I were looking at it. And my concern was, I'd like to win this lawsuit. I'm the state treasurer. I want to. I want to win this lawsuit and be, you know, in the next couple of years. I'd feel pretty confident. Mm -hmm. But that's not the problem. The problem is, how do I get in front of this, and in a way that, uh, you know, helps me between now and and the primary. And so the time is very, very short. And so the treasurer may, in fact, be completely innocent and and the. 
and then the case may be resolved in his favor, but it may take place way after the primary. It will take place way after the primary. So what effect does that have on the rest of the race? Because we have Brady, Dillard, Rahner. Rahner, again, who has become well known from being basically unknown by spending $7 million in you know, every website you look at, at least in the news world, has his ads on it. He's on television all the time. Some, on some of them, he's upside down. Uh, <laughs> uh, there are now people talking about him. Uh, there is a group, I, which I believe gets funding from the Democratic Governors Association that is linking him to Stuart Levine, who was one of the uh, convicted people in, involved with bribery in, in who used to be on the Teachers Retirement System Board and was involved in lots of other things. Uh, and he was being paid, I think it's $25,000 a month by a company that Rahner, uh, Rahner's people had sometimes bought or sold or had control over because Rahner is in the venture capital business and was buying and selling companies all the time and was on various boards. But he claims he doesn't know Stuart Levine. And even though Levine voted while on the teacher's retirement system board to give $50 million of investment to a Rahner firm to invest for the state, uh, Rahner says there is no linkage here and nothing wrong was done. And he put out, so there's an ad with Blagojevich and Levine saying that, you know, they helped out Rahner and it's pay to play. But then Rahner already put out an ad saying, listen, people are just worried about me. I had nothing to do with this. The Tribune story basically said that the, the connection was tenuous at best. And if they, you know, what people are scared of is I'm going to shake up government and spend less and tax less. And they're right about that. And he gives a nice smile. Is he on the way to winning this thing or do we know yet? I don't think we know yet, uh, but I think that, that he's, he's clearly the front runner. One thing I wonder about is what might have been if some of these ads had come out a bit earlier. Uh, I don't think it, folks, You mean the anti-ads? The anti-ads, yeah. Uh, the quote-unquote nip it in the bud sort of strategy. I don't think that folks took Rahner seriously enough until it was too late. And, and now they're, they're having to play catch up. Having this uh, stuff with the treasurer thrown in certainly doesn't help that. I mean, I think there's probably an anybody but Rahner uh, 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 faction out there. Oh, there clearly and, is. There clearly yeah. is. <laughs> and, and, and right, the, the, they, just, they just can't get, seem to get any traction. And certainly the, the, the treasurer, uh, what scandal, fiasco, uh, incident, a matter, whatever you want to call it, uh, that, that just has folks uh, flummoxed, I think. Interesting. Yeah. The, one, one of those anti honor groups is the Republican Fund for Jobs and Progress, so named by Steve Scher, who used to be campaign manager and chief of staff to uh, Congressman Aaron Schock, a Republican, and Scher is from Peoria. They, this group, it raised a lot of money, I know, from, uh, I think it's an operating engineers union up, up north, and, um, but you know, he claims there's a lot of Republicans in that, so it's not like a labor thing or a Democratic thing. It's just peop uh, people who don't want Ronner because partly, you know, there are various problems with some of his businesses, and he's very anti-union. And well, he talks about union bosses a lot and how they should not have power in Springfield. Uh, but this group put out a 12-page mailer that apparently went to half a million uh, homes of Republican primary voters. Any effect on that? He's, Mr. Scher has been quoted as saying that that's had a big effect in races that he's run in the past for people like uh, Aaron Schock and others. Well, it's, it's clear, I mean, if you, their cross tabs from some of the polling would indicate that Rauner has pretty good name recognition among the Republican electorate and that his negatives are fairly low. People, people don't know, you know, they know who he is and uh, they, they, you know, they, they may don't think bad things about him. And, and th those, th you know, that's something you can move. You know, it's much easier to drive up a candidate's negatives than it is to raise their positives. And, but it may very well be too little too late. I, I think I agree there. You know, we looked at self-funders and big, fen big spenders in the past, Corinne Wood, Rod Gidwich. They weren't very, you know, didn't spend their money well. Uh, they just didn't do very well. And, and people looked at first-time candidate, rich guy, you know, it's going to be a run of the past. He's been very disciplined. He's hired good people in terms of the organization. He sticks to the message. They just pound, pound, pound the same way and that if everybody remembers what Rod Bogoyevich did to Judy of R. Topinka that thinking? summer, <laughs> pound, pound, pound. That's right. And this was a time when most newspapers in the state were, were saying Rod Bogoyevich is bad news. Don't go for him. We know Judy Bar Topinka. Go for her. Uh, and other, other than the Sun-Times group, most papers all over the state were for uh, Judy Bart to pick yeah. in that race, and he spent what twenty million dollars saying what's she thinking, and everybody thought she was as bad, yeah. despite the fact that she, you know, has reemerged as a well loved candidate. But we we have to be careful; she's now running against Sheila Simon for yeah. you know re-election. They tied her to you know to uh, George Ryan, 
And when you looked at the cross tabs after the election was over, if you were concerned about corruption in government, you were slightly more likely to vote for Rod Bogoyevich than you were for Jim Bartopinka. <laughs> and, and, I mean, and, and, and Rod Bogoyevich <laughs> ran, uh, when he was first elected, he ran on an anti-corruption platform, anti-corruption place and he, in Illinois. And he passed, That's you how know, corrupt people get elected. And he, and he, and he passed some <laughs> ethics legislation while he was in. Um, uh, I'm going to preface this by saying that back when Glenn Prashard was running against George Ryan, a Tribune poll had that Democrat from Southern Illinois Prashard down like 25 points to George Ryan, you know, I don't know, a couple months out. And I remember Prashard complained after he lost that election only by a few points that money dried up. You know, when a poll like that comes out, however it's done, money dries up. Well, it, within the last week, the Tribune poll had Rauner at 40 percent, uh, Brady at 20. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I think Rutherford at 13 and Dillard at 11 with 15 undecided. Um, well, the money's already dried up to the other candidates besides Rauner. Anyway, what effect does something like that have? And again, you know, how did the other candidates turn this around? Well, I, I mean, you're, I wonder why did the money dry up for the other candidates? If there is this, and there is a strong anybody but Rauner faction there, how come nobody else can get any money? I mean, certainly uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Aaron Shock's uh, uh, Steve, yeah, Steve Scherer. He knows, I mean, he, Aaron Schock is one of the most effective fundraisers in, in, in Washington, D.C. Certainly Mr. Scherer would be able to, to tap, you would hope, some of these sources. It hasn't happened. I wonder, is there going to be a last-minute injection? Uh, uh, that wouldn't be entirely surprising because Rauner does have a lot of potential negatives, some of which are being taken advantage of right now. I think that that 12-page mail mailer was kind of a primer on it, so to speak. You know, But he's got this issue with uh, 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 ties to Stu Levine. He's got that bold-faced lie that he told that you, that you reported. I mean, there's just no way around that he told you one thing, he told somebody else something about if he talked opposed. to Arnie He's flip-flopped on, on minimum wage. Uh, uh -huh. He has he's clouded his, his his daughter into the in this pr prestigious school. Uh, did, I think I may have mentioned the nursing homes. Uh, that that's I think that's probably nursing homes that yeah his, he was he, on a board of a and, yes. then, and then they I guess removed themselves before there were some lawsuits and yeah there 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 there's results. yeah I mean you you could, you could make the argument that that he was in there to make money not to take care of old people and old people vote. So I mean you, he of you, course would tell you different. He, but of course, yes. would tell you different, but what I'm saying is that there's not a lack of opportunity there. And here you've got a candidate also who really hasn't said anything. I mean, so far as in a concrete plan on anything that I'm aware of. I'm just going to go to Springfield and shake things up. Oh, okay, how are you going to shake it up? Are you going to, are you go, what are you going to do on taxes, for example? What are you going to do on a budget? What do you, well, what Well, he's not programs? going to extend the tax that we have. We know that. Right. What, 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 you know, who, you know, and if he's elected, is he correct, is he created so much acrimony? Are you going to be able to work with anybody? Because once you're in the governor, you know, once you're in that chair, then you got Madigan to deal with and you got the Senate as well. Okay. Well, that, he's been, yeah, I mean, the message has been simple, but he has been very disciplined. And, and he has made some missteps, but usually first-time candidates, particularly first-time candidates with a lot of money and, and you know, are tend to be people who have very big egos. And so one of the things that's that he's done well so far is to stay disciplined and to the point of driving people nuts because he won't answer he won't answer well, the question. He doesn't come around Springfield much, but we know that. But he's got, yeah. you know, because the other, his opponents do not have money, and it is a function of a little bit of them phoning it in. There's not, it was not, I mean, Rutherford was running, you know, trying to raise money, trying to be organized. Dillard and Brady, those are, you know, they really have been phoning it in. There really has not been a really aggressive, there's not been a lot of energy. And what Rauner did very effectively, he got some of the people that had raised money in the past, Gidwich, some other people who were kind of money men within the system, he then got all of the big names, the Eulens, the Griffins, the kind of people that can write those big money owners really of companies big, or, or, or really people who are in financial jobs. And surprisingly enough, he's got social money. So Jack Rozier, who is, you know, kind of the main name that you come across in terms of funding. Carpentersville and is yeah. very well, strongly anti-abortion, which actually Mr. Rauner is not. He's yeah, pro-choice. And, and not for gay marriage. But what where the connection there seems to be is that Rauner is very aggressively anti-teacher union, anti-unions, and apparently, you know, wrote, I would assume Rozier looks at this and says, we're not going anywhere on those social issues, but this guy can make a difference. Jack Rozier is champion news, I think, yes. for, which for years has been running teacher salaries and saying that administrators and teachers are paid too much in Illinois. Yeah. So there's this right. great, I think there's a great counter message to Rauner 
that's just not getting out because nobody has any resources. Okay. We'll see. You mentioned earlier, you know, how well organized he is, and one of the other things that he's done, and it's it looks very smart politically. He's on the side, start donated like a, ha a quarter million dollars, and started this term limits push, having people collect signatures to put a something on the ballot to uh, in November to. Uh, institute an eight-year term limit for most state officials, and he's so he's talking about I'll bring you term limits. So, Kent, you were talking about this. Um, <laughs> is that can that get on the ballot? And and how is it is it smart and is it doable? Well, I and is it popular? It's popular. It, uh, term limits are all this popular. It he's going to get the signatures, you know, and like two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, and, and so he's making he's identifying very closely with this, which means the money spent on term limits, even if he's not in the commercials, people are going to make that association. So again, it's been very smart politically. Um, whether it gets on the ballot or not is up to the courts. I mean, his ads say Pat Quinn didn't deliver on term limits. All right, well, that's intellectually dishonest. Pat Quinn got it on, you know, got the signatures, and the Supreme Court threw it off. So, I, you know, if, if Rauner gets the signatures and they throw it off, does that mean Rauner didn't deliver on term limits? And, but, and, and Rauner has tried, I mean, they've fashioned this so that it changes the number of, it actually increases the members of the House and decreases the number in the Senate. And he says by changing the legislature, that makes it constitutional. Do you and, buy that? And, and he changes the... Uh, oh, the term of the, senators? The veto oh. is also. It's, oh, well, it's it goes from a 60% uh, a to a two-thirds. What it comes down to is you have to have... Is that to override? Yeah, yeah. to override. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Structure and process. You have to change the structure and the process of the General Assembly. Is, the term, is a term limit structure and process... Or is it a qualification for office? Is it like saying nobody over, nobody under, you know, you have to be at least 40 to run for the state senate? You know, I don't think that's constitutional. And so that's what the court will wrestle with is you can't dress it up and drag things in that are structure and process and sneak your key thing in there, you know, and, uh, underneath. So nobody knows. And is term limits a good idea anyway, or does that matter in this argument? <laughs> Because, you know, I mean, I, you always hear the argument against is, well, the lobbyists aren't, aren't going to be term limited and the staff won't be. So you'll get these, the, the intellect, you know, the body of knowledge over at the State House will be the people who have been yeah, there the John longest. John Shimkus, he knows about term limits. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. He yeah. said he would serve, what, 12? But then George yeah. Bush <laughs> called him in the Oval Office yeah. and said, we need yeah, you. Yeah. Well, volunteer he, term limits don't and he, seem to work very well. Well, yeah, there, there are less draconian ways, I think, to arrive at a, at a, at a, at a better form of government than term limits. Okay. I mean, none of them are easy to do. Term limits is the easy... Uh, uh, it's it's the easy fix. It's okay. easy to get on the ballot. It's we have we have uh, not much time left, but let's talk about Governor Quinn. Uh, the, the Governor Quinn did get the legislature recently to move his budget address to after the primary. He says he's formulating a five-year budget plan, but uh, the state still owes billions of dollars in unpaid bills. So, and. Pat Quinn, of course, uh, there's a man named T.O. Hardiman from the Chicago area who's on the ballot against him, but Pat Quinn will easily uh, win that. I think we can predict at this point uh, and be the nominee. Uh, how will he handle the budget? Kent, you're, a, you're somewhat of a numbers guy. Do you have well, any idea? <laughs> I, you know, there are a couple ways to go about it. I mean, clearly we're losing half of the tax increase on January 1st. So you have to play it straight and say, you know, we're losing a billion and a half, two billion dollars worth of revenue. And, you know, you can propose a doomsday budget, which you're going to get hammered by people who say, well, you know, uh, you're cutting off, taking, you're hurting children, you're hurting uh, widows and orphans. Uh, and they'll tell you that th there's magic there somewhere, that we where there's $2 billion worth of waste and fraud. So he's at a disadvantage because he has to get specific. Uh, I suspect they'll probably do something that kind of positions themselves to get to January and then he redo do it. A, didn't he, he say he wouldn't do a half-year budget? I think I heard that. But Well, and, and yeah. he's going to have a budget. The legislature is going to have a yeah, budget. Ultimately, whatever he proposes sometimes doesn't matter because the legislature is yeah. the one that ultimately I, passes I, it. I, if, you know, I don't know that you're going to get the specificity. In fact, I doubt you're going to get the specificity out of his opponents. Okay. They're going to say, here's how we'd handle it. So he's got to come up with some numbers, and, and that really is probably not an advantage. Okay. I, go ahead, Bruce. Well, one thing I was going to say is that if Pat Quinn is anything, he's a very good campaigner. I think he proved that last time around. And I wouldn't be at all surprised. He puts out uh, just, uh, I think it's probably he'd lean towards a doomsday. And then just challenge, throw the gauntlet down to his, his political opponents and say, you think you can do better? Do it. 
You know, yeah, but, but he has to. But then he'll have to run all season, all summer on that doomsday idea and say, well, he proposed hurting hurting people. But yeah, I think that's probably the lesser of two evils. I mean, that's just you know, that's just me saying it. Who knows? I mean, <laughs> but the the the, the, the in, in point of fact, he is the guy on the hot seat, and and I think he, he's again he's a good campaigner, and I think that he can challenge these folks to say, you know, it's great to stand up in a Carhartt jacket that's still got the fold marks from the box it came out of. You're but talking about Mr. Ronner again? No, <laughs> <laughs> but 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 you know, there's a lot more to, to governing this state than standing up in in, in front of a TV camera and saying you're going to clean house. You, once you know you've got a house, you got to maintain. So I should I should let uh, the viewers know that there is a debate in Springfield. Uh, it'll be televised on the radio, WICS and WTAX radio, WICS TV, uh, six to seven p.m. live with the four candidates for uh, the Republican nomination for governor. Um, it'll be at the Hoagland Center, but it's a ticketed event. Uh, so if you don't have a ticket, you shouldn't. <laughs> you're not going to be able to get in because there are not that many seats. So uh, an interesting time. Just another quick race. Uh, another Tribune poll showed Jim Oberweiss, who is now a state senator from the Aurora area, over Doug Truex of Mount Prospect. Um, uh, is it Mount Prospect? It's one of the. It's uh, Downers Grove. Downers. I knew it was a two a two name suburb. Um, winning the Republican nomination like 52 to 15. So it looks like we're going to have unless things change a lot. Oberweiss over Truex. Truex is a. You know, Oberweiss is the ice cream vendor and store man, and Shrex is a West Point grad, and they're vying to take on Dick Durbin in the fall. Does it matter? And will, with Oberweiss at the top of the ticket, if that happens, is that good for the Republican Party? It's probably not good for the Republican Party. I think we'll, you know, we're offering Senator Oberweiss another opportunity to lose a statewide election, and and I, he I was really happy when he saw the poll because he was at the Sangamon County Lincoln yeah. Day dinner and and he was quite happy with this result. Yeah. I, I just think it's it, it it is not helpful to have you know that mm. gives Durbin a pretty much of a free reign mm. to do things. Okay, well we'll see how it goes. We have to end it there. Kent Redfield, Bruce Rushton, thanks for your help and comments. I'm Bernie Schoenberg and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Capitol View. Mm -hmm.